everybody. Welcome back to today's Bible study. I am your speaker, JT O'Malley, 9681. Um, obviously, I don't even have to say it, but we all know what the government's been doing recently with the Ten Commandments being taken down and same-sex marriage being legalized nationwide, all this other stuff. I mean, it's sad, but the good thing that I could tell you is that everything's falling into place just as it was all prophesied. And so go ahead at your leisure, pause the video and say a word of prayer before we get started. Okay, our title is Walk in the Light. And we are going to start in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1 through 17 is our main scripture to focus on. I mean, there are cross references, but this is the main scripture. And also to tell you, you'll hear me use Hebrew words, so I will briefly explain things a little bit here and there from what I'm saying, so hopefully you won't get confused. And you can always pray, make sure that you pray that you will un that you will get an understanding from the Holy Spirit and not from me. Remember, it's always from the Spirit. God can speak through all of us. Elohim can speak through all of us to each other. But remember, the one above is the one who is all-knowing. All right. So Ephesians 5, 1 through 17. Be you therefore followers of Yahuwah. That's the name of the Father. I don't say Jehovah, I don't say Yahweh. I do not believe those words are true. I could be wrong, but I don't believe that those words are true. I believe they are mistranslated. Be you therefore followers of Yahuwah as dear children, and walk in love as Mashiach also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Yahuwah for a sweet-smelling savor which is which uh, which is is basically an odor a a nice sweet a sweet smelling odor but fornication which is a big one in the in today's world in all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as become saints neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous men, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Mashiach and of Elohim. Now Elohim is the title of what God is, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When you say that God, that's Elohim in Hebrew. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come to the wrath of Yahuwah upon the children of disobedience. Be not you therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of of the Ruach is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Yeah, Ruach is Hebrew for spirit. Capitalized, that's Holy Spirit. Lowercase would be our spirits. Proving what is acceptable unto Yahuwah. I believe Yahuwah is what really should be there when it comes to the Lord. Unless you're talking about Jesus, who in Hebrew is Yahshua, you know, I guess it, I guess it just depends on what's being said, of, w of which way it goes. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, which means expose them. And that doesn't mean to, like, force it out, beat them up with it. That's not what that's talking about. A lot of people end up beating people up, thinking that's what the Bible teaches, and the Bible does not teach that. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, 
For whatsoever does make manifest in light, wherefore he says, Awake you that sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Now just as a little briefing on verse 14 is, is saying that you are that that the world has caused you to, to fall asleep within the world, the flesh, of all of this bad stuff that's not of God. So you need to wake up and arise away from the world that is the that is dead in spirit, that is spiritually dead, and Christ will give you light and and raise you to the truth. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, being you not unwise, but understanding that the will of Yahuwah is. So, where do you get your model for living your life? There are three ways. One is from the world, that you take whatever is being taught in society and follow that as truth. There is also self, yourself, where people do whatever they think and not even from the world, also not from God. They don't listen to what the world says, nor from God. They only listen to what they want to do, and that's it. And then, of course, there's Jesus and his word, that you follow the Son of of Elohim and his teachings. So what do you need to aim for and avoid to walk in the light? Well, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1, it says to have Christ likeness. You can always go back and read these verses again. So to have Christ likeness, we should want to think, act, and respond like Yahshua. What would Yahshua do and think? You remember the little crosses, the little wristbands and whatnot that they used to have out all the time that, that would have WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know? There's some cross references. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And so what is it saying in this message? Is that, that Elohim predetermined that when he saved you, that you will be conformed into the likeness of Mashiach every day. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For, for we are his workmanship created in Gashua HaMashiach, well, you can say it, Christ Jesus in English, if you want to do that. Unto good works, which Yahweh had before ordained that we should walk in them. We are created to be the workmanship for Elohim, as Elohim will work through us, so the world will see Yahshua HaMashiach in us. They're meant to be so, not for not us doing works in Yahshua's name. You don't do works to, 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 gain, to keep your salvation. But Elohim working through us providing the truth of Yahshua to the world. It's always through us, us stepping out in faith so that he can work through us. It's not about doing works to keep your salvation. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, let, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So, for this message, what this is saying is that the role of the church, that's not a church building or denomination or whatnot, it's those who are true to Yeshua. That's the church, capitalized. So the role of the church is to teach the word of Elohim so we can grow into Mashiach. You go to worship, tune into Elohim with your scriptures, and Elohim will change you as you continue to tune into his word. 
And so, back in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2 says to walk in love. Now go to Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. This was after the Sadducees tried to talk to Yahshua about what Moses said about the man and his wife, and he died, and she had to marry his brothers, his mothers one by one, because out of the other ones they did not bear any children. So at the resurrection, which one would be the woman's husband since she was married to all seven of the brothers? Well, and then Yahshua said to them, you are in, in error because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. And completely silenced them. So when the Pharisees heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, he was one of the highest of, of the Pharisees, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, which is the greatest commandment in the Torah. Now the Pharisees pretty much made it as an actual law. That's what religion does. Now it's not a law. It is teachings. But people look at it so much as it was a law. So a lot of false stuff is said about it. Torah is, is Hebrew. That's how you say it in Hebrew. It's for teachings or instructions or directions. Not a law like the law of this land. We get law from Greek. So Yahshua said unto them, You should love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the teachings, the Torah, and the prophets. A lot of people miss out on this one. They don't understand this correctly. So what Yeshua teaches is that the two greatest commandments are to love Yahweh before everything and everyone. That includes your spouse, your, your, your lover, your children, your, whatever. All that comes later to love. Always love your Elohim. Love Yahweh. Love your father. Love Yeshua first. And the second is to love other people as you would love yourself. Love affectionately. I hope that was spelled correctly. So give Elohim your attention. So John chapter 14 verse 15 says, If you love Jesus, keep his commandments. If you love Yahshua, keep his commandments. You can look that up. Yeshua was mainly talking about the two greatest commandments to love, no, no self-centeredness, sacrifice what is good for yourself and love others before you. Yeshua laid his life down for us. So let's lay our lives down for others. Put others before you. Also, when it comes to Jesus saying this, to keep his commandments and people who say, well, we don't have to do anything with the law anymore because it was put on the cross with Jesus, so we are not under the law. Well, that's true. We are not under it as it was pretty much a law, as the, feather, as the Pharisees always put it through on the people. Because man could not keep the Torah. Man will always fall short. Even King David, all of them, even Elijah, even Elisha, has fallen short of it. But see, that's what repentance is for, is to keep your relationship going good with Elohim, not about keeping your salvation. So it's not that you need to keep all, all, that, all that stuff that the Jews did before, like Passover and stuff like that, because that was put on the cross. But here's the thing. When Jesus said that he did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill them i'm just going to use the word law and so since he fulfilled it how would we be able to keep it well first thing is we cannot that's completely fruitless second of all you are truly saved in in jesus yahshua he will teach you how to love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul and to love your neighbor as yourself more and more each day to be more like Jesus so that when you keep these two commandments in Jesus, 
you can keep all of the commandments and not just the Ten Commandments. So how would it mean for Jesus to say, if you love me, keep my commandments? Well, if you truly love Jesus, you would want to diligently seek Jesus to, to follow his teachings, follow his lead in life. So no, the law is not done away with. They rely within Jesus being put on the cross. Only through Jesus, by truly being saved, can any of the law be kept by any of us. Because we cannot do it. Only Jesus could do it. And I just hope that makes sense to, to at least some of you out there. I don't know any other greater way for my, from myself at this point of how to explain that. So in Ephesians in chapter 5, in verses 3 through 7, they say to avoid darkness. So you must walk in the light, do not walk into the darkness. We all used to live in the darkness, just like so many people are doing in the world right now. Those who practice these sinful things willingly that are said in verses 3 through 5 are worshiping other gods, that's lowercase because it's not the true Elohim, and not the true Elohim, like I put here. So Elohim says that living in willingful sin does not make you a Christian, as if you consider to call yourself a Christian. Some people don't want to call themselves that, and that's fine. Let, let's just put it in another way. Instead of Christian, a follower and or believer in Yahshua. And so Elohim says that if you are living in will, willingful sin, it does not make you a follower or believer in Yahshua or even in Yahuwah, and it means nothing for you being saved because you did not accept Yahshua in your heart, but only in your mind. You cannot fool Elohim. So do not let, t do not let people teach you false teachings of once you confess to Yahshua, you can live any way you want and you are still saved. Elohim says that is not so. You must accept Yahshua in your heart in order to be saved. Because only then will you, will you actually start wanting to diligently seek him. Now, sexual sin, greed for gain, things that are obscene will keep you from entering the kingdom of heaven. Not losing salvation, but being truly saved will not be so within you if you live with these filthy things in your life. Because if you want those things more than truly being saved, you will not be saved at all. You can fool yourself, you can fool people. You will not fool Elohim. So do not hang out with others who choose to live for other gods or other Elohims, lowercase, and not for the one true Elohim. I mean, just look at all of the porn, look at all the fornication that's going on, the same sex marriage and all that. That's not love. I don't it doesn't matter what those kind of people say, that is not for love. It's for their own lust, for their own sexual gratification. They would much rather enjoy it with each other, obviously, but it's not true love. Because that kind of love for marriage to take place only truly exists between a man and a woman. Now, also in Ephesians 5, in verses 8 through 10, they say to walk in the light and call what is good as God says and what is evil as God says. So Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. This is a popular one here. It says, Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not unto you your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths be not wise in your own eyes fear Yahuwah which that fear is not talking about emotional fear it's talking about you diligently following him so diligently follow Yahuwah I'll just say it like that and depart from evil and the evil is not is not pretty much of like you would see in movies of villainous ways against uh, hero, 
uh, heroic ways. No, evil or wicked or or whatever means your own way. Well, would would actually be Satan's way, but it's not the way, which is Yahshua. So depart from your own ways and follow Yahuwah, because Yahshua will guide you too, because he's the one who you who you need, who you should accept in order to be saved. And it shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. I may have mispronounced a couple words there, but whatever. You should get your knowledge of good and evil. You know, Yahshua's way and the ways of the flesh from Elohim only. Find out what Yahuwah wants. Yahuwah wants what is healthy for your soul as the world wants what is healthy just for the body, just for the flesh. Now, Ephesians 5 and verses 11 through 12 say, to call things what God calls them and not what the world calls them. You expose things for what Yahuwah calls them. An affair with anyone other than your spouse is actually adultery, not just some affair. Two people making love outside of marriage is actually fornicating. There is no love making in it because it's lust after your own sexual gratification. That's not love. And an alcoholic is actually a drunkard. And an alcoholic is truly a drunkard. Watch out for words of the flesh. Don't even talk about these things or listen to them or watch them. And I've been having I've been having a little bit of trouble with stuff too and getting and I've been getting rid of things too. Like I've, there's still some music that I know I need to get rid of, but I have to look deeper into it to really find out what it is I need to get rid of because there's something telling me that there is some music that I'm still listening to that I really need to get rid of because it's not good for me. I mean, even I still have problems. We all, we all will struggle. So, Ephesians 5, verses 13 and 14 say to take your life and put it under the light of God's word. I'm just going to speak in, speak in pure English the rest of the way through this. So let God's light shine in. It will expose the darkness, wake up from the world, and listen to the word of God. It's like I explained earlier. The world gives these things, and then you start falling asleep in them, so you're not focusing. But then if you were to truly get saved, then that's when God says, wake up. Wake up from this. This stuff is not good for you. Start going this way. And God will help you more and more the more that you diligently seek him. But if you do not want that and you'd rather follow some of the way, even just some of the ways of the world, even if, even just a little bit of the ways of the world, then you're not going to wake up. That's just the whole thing about it. And then lastly, in Ephesians 5 verses 15 through 17 say, To do what the will of the Lord is which is to be wise and get right with God. 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleans us from all sin. Now also verse John chapter 1 and verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, also in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, this is the very last scripture here, cross-reference of this Bible study. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may seek your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so, if you walk in the light, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you and you will have fellowship with other believers. How do you stop willingful sin? Well, you ask Jesus to save you 
because you do not want to live the wrong way anymore. God will forgive you and save you. If you still have a will to keep sin, you will not be saved because God must come first in your heart. God knows you better than you know yourself. And that's going to be it for this one, folks. If you have any questions, any prayer requests, I'll leave a link for my dis my uh, discussion page on my channel. Anything else, you can just put in the comments. So until next time, this is JTML9681 signing off. And I bear this Bible study in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.